Hello, my name is Sarah Dean. I am an assay development scientist for a clinical oncology lab, and I have put together a video tutorial series on using IGB. In these tutorials, I will demonstrate how to view next-generation sequencing data in IGB. We will look at variants that were called by our secondary analysis software and determine whether they are real or artifacts by examining the DNA alignments and comparing them to a reference genome. Here's a list of topics covered by this video series, so you can skip to the video that's most useful to you. Video 1, this video, covers what IGB is, how the data used in this tutorial was collected, how to install the software, how the software looks when installed successfully, and what to do if it is not installed successfully. Video 2 covers some of the file types you can upload into IGV and what they add to the analysis. Video 3 covers basic usage of the software and includes a tour of some of the basic functions available for viewing alignments and interpreting variants. And then video 4 is similar, but it covers more specifically how to use IGV to distinguish sequencing artifacts from true variants in DNA alignments. In video 4, we will focus on small variants, so SNPs and small indels. Video 5 discusses how to view and interpret large structural variants in IGV. This is a bit more complicated and it requires some prior familiarity with the software. IGB is an open source tool for visualizing genomics data. It was developed by scientists at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, which is a research institute focused on molecular medicine. IGB can be used for viewing next generation sequencing data and array data, allowing human discernment to contribute to secondary analysis of molecular data. So now let's download and install IGB. To find IGB for download, you would just go to this website here, and there's a bunch of information about the software. Go to Download IGB, and here you'll find a bunch of different download options for your operating system. IGB will tell you here what, what version of Java is required for the software to work properly. You can either download the software with Java included or without. So here's where you may want to check what version of Java you have on your operating system. If you want to download Java separately from IGV, you can go to Oracle and find recent versions of Java here. But if this looks a little too complicated, maybe it's just better to download IGV with Java included. The installation is easy. Once you click the download button, an installer will begin working and it will prompt you to agree to various things. Um, just agree, 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 and then you'll have IGV installed. So then you'll need to check to make sure IGV is working properly. So here's the icon. If IGV is working properly, it will look something like this when you open it. Uh, down here is the reference genome. I already have one loaded because I've downloaded one before. Um, if you, it may not be there when you first open IGV. So the reference genome currently being used is listed in this box up here. If you don't already have a reference genome downloaded, you can just click for more. And here's a list of all the reference genomes available. Uh, we're using a human genome, so I'm just going to type HG in the search bar for short. Um, and I'm going to be using human genome 19 for the purposes of this tutorial. All right, so here's human genome 19. Now you'll notice that this track is blank. The reason this track is blank is because I have not loaded any data into it yet. Now the next tutorial video in this series will explain some of the different file types that can be loaded for viewing into IGB. So I'm not going to explain much about them right now. Instead, I'm just going to take a couple of these data files, a BAM and BAI, drag them over here uh, so that we can look at them. And you'll see that now it says select a chromosome and zoom in to see alignments. These file types can't be viewed when you're too zoomed out too far. So you have to zoom in to a certain degree to, for the alignments to appear. Uh, so this box up here is where the list of chromosomes are, but I'm, not, I'm going to ignore these instructions and instead of selecting a chromosome to zoom in, I'm just going to type in the search bar the name of a gene that I know is represented in our data set. 
All right, so now I typed in the gene and it's taken me to that gene. You can see in the reference genome, here's ASXL1. But now in this box, this has been converted to genomic position. So it's got the chromosome and the, um, the genomic position range that is in view here. So you can also use this box if you know the genomic position you want to go to for viewing. You can simply type it here using the format that's currently displayed. So in this gene down at the bottom of the reference genome, I, um, you can see the exons are thick and the introns are thin lines. I'm going to center an exon and then zoom in far enough until the al DNA alignment appears. Ah, so here's my data. Okay, so these are all the DNA sequences that we sequenced on the Next Generation Sequencer in our lab. And uh, there's a bunch of color coding and things like that. And we will talk more about what that means in following videos. But for now, I just want to show you what the display should look like when the software has been downloaded properly. Also, if I zoom in further, the DNA sequence of the reference genome is displayed by color-coded nucleotides. So if I zoom in even further, you can see what nucleotides are there. And then this is a, the translation, the amino acid sequence. And this in, so the amino acid sequence in the reference genome is in blue. And then in gray, this, uh, one of these gray amino acid sequences lines up with the reference genome and the others are offset. Those, you can use those for um, predicting what frame shift mutations might do to a particular translation. Now, if you are not seeing any of this, even after downloading the appropriate reference genome and the correct version of Java, you may have to uninstall and reinstall both IGB and Java. So sometimes when we have trouble with downloads and installations, we end up with more than one version or more than one copy of one of the softwares on our computer, and those two different copies or two different versions of the software can interfere with each other. So it's sometimes useful to search down, search th through your computer for all related files for IGV and Java, delete them all, uninstall them, make sure everything is uninstalled and deleted, and then go through this download process from scratch from a clean slate. So you can search for IGV and related files um, using a search bar, this is Windows, but you'll have some version of this in whatever operating system you're using. So if I just type in IGV, uh, and uh, there's a bunch of hits here. So here's the software, I can right click on it and open the file location. Here's the uninstaller, I would use that to uninstall the software, but then I would go through the same search process to make sure all associated folders are deleted before reinstalling the software again. After downloading the appropriate version of Java, you're going to have to shut down your computer and reopen it for it to work properly with IGV. So that concludes this tutorial on downloading and installing IGV. The next video in the series will be about some of the different file types that you can load into IGV and what they show you.